Okay, Jessica, let's take a look at your landscape shots here. Uh, so I'll kind of go through the through the uh, summary here. Okay, looks good. All right, we'll start at the beginning. And let's see here if it pops up. Okay, and so I can see that uh, it's sideways, and so yeah, I understand. You know, sometimes that uh, depending on how it goes into um, Picasso, that it can end up like this. So uh, anyway, um, I like the shallow depth of field. I think that's good. I'm looking over here. So you shot your with your 50 millimeter lens, uh, ISO of 100. That's really good. Um, and uh, f1.8 for that shallow depth of field. Good. I love the. I like the effect, especially that you can see the the bark there. Okay, this one. Um, um, you know, with the little tree right there. I like the fact that you uh, did some black and white here. This is effective. I think I probably would go in here and dodge this a little bit so that the tree stands out a little bit more. But I do like the. Uh, the shadows that add to the uh, the horizontal shadows that add to the vertical. Okay. So you're shooting a lot with the um, with the aperture at 1.8. So, uh, but this you know I like this a lot. You know the lighting and everything looks beautiful. That's really nice. And uh, this one. Not, not as striking as the one before it, but uh, not bad. You know, still out there experimenting with the 1.8. So, uh, and and uh, I do love the that real shallow depth of field. Um, okay, here's another one, another shallow depth of field shot. Like the composition of the trees overhanging the uh, park bench there. That looks good. Okay, also see it says that the. the looks like you maybe had did some um, minus on the exposure compensation which is great uh, you know that's that's really nice because you definitely need it you know for right in there so you don't uh, blow out your highlights but it uh, looks good and the same thing okay and a, a different uh, variation on what you were shooting I do like the the uh, the fact that this is um, Different, you know, basically extending down from the rest here, and um, and the shallow depth of field definitely gives you that uh, really nice sense of separateness from the background there. So that that worked out great. Okay, let's see what these. Okay, so this particular one, basically working on seeing the highlights right here. You know, and something right like this, if you intentionally didn't want that. Um, you know that's this worked out really well. I think that uh, you know essentially the picture though is more right in this area. You know if if you were just going strictly for the silhouette look, um, than to include the sky up there. But um, let's see. And so oh, so you were actually shooting f22 there. So um, oh, and you were doing a minus two to definitely get the. Um, the silhouette look. Okay, this one shooting off in a distant landscape. That's that's uh, quite nice, and and the fact that you used the f22, so you got your foreground and your background in focus. Um, very nice. Great that you did that. Okay, this one also. Uh, so you, know, you can see an example of uh, being able to see all the branches and everything of the tree and the distant uh, horizon out there in focus. Good. Okay, same thing with this one, only in color. And this one also greater depth of field. Different from the ones where you were shooting with the uh, F1.8 uh, on your shallow depth of field. So and then and the color variation on that. 
Okay, now this one, when you're in really close, now she's she's in focus, of course, but even though you're shooting at f22, if when you're in really close like this, um, you can tend to, um, your depth of field can still be um, soft, like it is here, especially when you're in so close. F36, okay. Um, that must be because you, you must be using a zoom lens on this one. Let's see. And this one is nice. Although I probably... Um, too bad maybe you didn't use a little flash or something to kind of fill this in because I think details here would be really nice to be able to see those details. And so sometimes when you're outside, you can pop that flash open and... Um, and and see if you can get a little bit of detail in in those areas. This is better. Uh, you can see where the detail is right here. I like this a little bit better because then you got kind of get an idea of the texture. But I see where the path, the highlights on the path have um, been um, basically uh, blown out. Okay, good. Uh, and in terms of composition too, you have this nice. Um, highlight on the path leading you uh, further back into the picture so that draws your eye right into there so that worked out well and oh okay so I see that this in this case right here you're using the exposure compensation to um, to get those different changes there good I uh, love the fact that you were using your exposure compensation here okay and so here's one with the uh, minus two for the exposure compensation and the one with the normal, yeah. So you, I definitely see that you can use, you know, you've got a, um, a work, good working knowledge of being able to use those exposure compensations. And then the plus two on this one. So, okay, well done. Um, there's some really nice landscape shots in there. I guess uh, some of my favorites as I go through. I tend, to, I guess, I tend to like the uh, shallow depth of field ones, and you know, one like this. Uh, really like this one. And uh, let's see what other ones I might have liked. So I guess that shows all of them. Okay. Um, yeah, and I love the fact that you experimented in black and white, and it looks like you have a pretty good understanding of exposure compensation. So great job. Thanks.